Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Mm, thank you for being here today on this lovely day that I'm in the studio and can't see any daylight. <laughs> if you're new here, I'm Carrie. I'm a matchmaker and a dating coach. And I have this channel that's all about dating, conversations, relationships, all the kind of stuff that we talk about in our personal relationships based on conversations that I have with both clients, people I'm coaching, and also people that I meet every day looking to, hoping to match them with one of my clients. Talk to lots of people about dating and relationships every day and always think to myself, oh, I know somebody else who might be interested in having a conversation about that. So that's what this channel's about. I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe if you're new because how do you know if you're gonna like this? But if at any point during the episode you feel inclined to hit that subscribe button, please do so. Also to all of you, my followers and everybody else, I, I never was asking anybody to follow me on Instagram, Coffee with Carrie G. Please do that. I promise you a positive experience over there. It's all good news, all very upbeat, uplifting, and I try to um, be a force for positivity in my life and also on my Instagram. Today, this one is geared towards the men, but don't go away if you're a woman because men are the people we're partnered with very often in relationships. So probably applicable to women in some ways as well. But today, geared towards the fellas, found out that 2022 has been the, the highest percentage of men claiming that they are lonely than we've had in decades. And it makes perfect sense to me in the job that I have, in the people I talk to, in the situations I see out in the dating worlds and with the apps. And I thought we could talk about that a little bit, kind of combining some stuff I read in an article online and my own personal experience for some stuff I'd like to share with you. I hope that sounds interesting. If so, stick around. That's what's on the agenda. So I think we can contribute part of this issue to the fact that dating opportunities are down. Expectations and standards for what women are looking for are up. And I thought we should talk about ways to bridge this gap and maybe make some changes or at least better understand the expectations that partners have of us in 2022. Men are the loneliest that they've been in generations. People in general are lonelier than they've ever been, but I think for men it was notable. And I blame a lot of this on the dating apps. You know, I talk about it all the time. We ruined them. We abused them. We didn't use them the way they were intended. We just watched people swipe right on everybody. And when they had a match, not be thrilled about it, send out their standard message, see what bites. It was more like a, a fishing expedition than, um, what do you call those dating situations like speed dating, where you know you could get to know somebody a little bit, at least a little bit, and decide whether or not they moved on to the next level. I was kind of hoping that that's what dating apps would be and become closer to the way we meet people organically in real life. But the dating apps have been broken. There are some changes on the horizon. I do have a episode I'm going to be filming, one about the dating app I do recommend and why, and one of the dating apps making some changes to maybe get itself back on the right track. So we can talk about that in the future, but let's talk about some of the reasons that the dating apps have created a situation where I think it's contributing to people being lonelier. Number one, I think the illusion of having tons of options has made people invest less of themselves and less of their own time in getting to know people. I mean, I see this regularly with people who aren't swiping. Some of the things that happen on the apps become so ingrained in our uh, patterns of behavior that it then becomes something I see as a matchmaker working with clients who aren't swiping. Instead, they're paying me a lot of money to do all the legwork and find somebody who shares their values and their interests and their goals for a relationship and all these other finer details. And still, I give them a match and they have a nice connection, but there's no follow through often. They deny themselves getting to know somebody on a second date for reasons 
that I think are due to the fact that they know that there's just lots more women out there they can swipe on, right? There's just always going to be more women available because you see all the pictures when you're swiping. Tons of people out there looking for a partner. It gives the illusion you could have a connection with all these people so that people don't prioritize and cherish, I would even say, the connection that they've most recently made. That somehow, if they get busy, just gets pushed aside because there's always that backup of more swiping available. And I say it's the illusion of more because it seems like there's a lot of people, but there's not a lot of people that you're going to choose once you actually match with them. So if you're gonna drop the ball once a connection's made or a conversation in the first three minutes isn't thrilling and charming or super flirtatious, then there's the illusion that you have matches available to you when in fact it's just a lot of people that we're going to see you repeating the same patterns with if you're not more vested. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that thinking there are all these options has made people against their better interests, even choosier, more picky than what they had been previously. And certainly this is leading to less matches, which is then leading to people not connecting and being lonelier. So I think the fact that people think there's all these options, that they can just choose a laundry list of the qualities that they must have. And if somebody doesn't meet those, you know, swipe left and no second date if you've met them in person and therefore you're biting off your nose to spite your face because you really want to meet somebody but you're so choosy about what this person must be because of all these options available that you end up connecting with nobody. So here's my second thought was that most often when I'm screening women and you ask them what their top priorities are in a person once you get past some of their values they say that they want somebody who's a good communicator, somebody who is emotionally intelligent and caring, and this is a problem because most men were not raised to be good communicators, especially men in their 50s. A lot of the study did reference men in their 40s and 50s. What women are looking for has changed, and maybe you don't have the skills to be super in touch with your emotions, be able to communicate that, and to have the reference point for what women refer to when they say emotionally intelligent. And this is sort of sad because men, even more so than women, are typically happiest when they're in a long-term committed relationship, but being raised in the era that these fellas were, they weren't given the tools to be able to have a relationship like that that has longevity and also I mean, women have always wanted a man who can talk to them, relate to them, understand them, be able to share their needs and what they want and how they're feeling. But if you're in your 40s or early 50s dating women who were of the next generation, these people grew up very aware of their boundaries, what they're looking for, what they have to have, being able to communicate these things, very in touch with their emotions and being able to share that easily. So there's a little disconnect there, generationally speaking, but I think even these days, there's still parents and people who are raising children, our future men to not be as uh, in touch with their feelings or able to communicate their feelings and needs the way that women would probably most appreciate. So now that we're aware of this gap, the dating apps, I've got an episode about how to use them with better intentions. I will link to it at the end of the episode. But if we're now aware that some of the rules have changed as to what women are looking for in a partner, and if we feel we're not quite equipped to be able to give them that, what do we do? How do we bridge that gap? And I had some thoughts on that that I'd like to share with you now. And one would be that like any other skill, it probably takes practice. So I was thinking, what would I do in this situation if I had to work on being better able to express my inner emotional life to someone I would practice? Who would I do that with? Somebody already close to me who's not a romantic interest. So I would do that with my closest friends, my family, my mother or my daughter. I think that perhaps you could practice doing this with a female friend or a family member as well. 
it's super healthy and very uplifting to be able to express the way you care about somebody to them. So I might just start with giving messages verbally to the people you care about and letting them know how much you care about that. Being able to articulate that, put it into words, how special they are to you and what you appreciate about them would be a really great first step in being able to bridge that gap and talk about how you feel. And before you do that, you may need to pay attention for a while to what's going on inside you, what you're feeling and being able to recognize those emotions. Uh, you know, some people are very evolved and I'm not saying all, no men can talk about the relationships, but certainly it wasn't taught by the masses in the previous generations of boys. So um, please, if you fall outside this category and you're super able to communicate your needs, your emotionality to another person or a partner, then obviously I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> so back to what I was saying about paying attention and becoming more aware of your own emotional life, what would be really, really helpful probably is journaling. If you don't want to share these things out loud with another person, my second suggestion would be to grab a notebook and start writing down the way you feel about things or something that happened and how it made you feel or writing a letter. I think it's always so heart filling to write a love letter to somebody I care about, not a romantic partner, but I mean, I tell my friends I love them all the time or tell them why I appreciate them. But you know, my daughter wrote my mom a letter of how much she means to her and why she was so happy for their special relationship. And a letter like that can be really freeing and get you in the flow and the groove of being able to express that in writing, but also journaling every day or in the evening before bed, taking some time uh, while you're having coffee to write out a paragraph about yesterday and the way something or other made you feel or how you want to feel about something in the future or how you feel about the prospect of a partner or how you feel currently, your current emotional state and your thoughts on that. So journaling would be my second choice. And of course you knew it was gonna land here. I'm not a therapist, but I recommend them because what's better than being able to talk to somebody who is paid to listen and hear you. It's just a great outlet. And not only that, listening and hearing you, but therapists have fantastic tools. That's what their where their value is in my own personal opinion. I have friends who will listen to me and give me suggestions on things to think about or different things to try. But a professional who has proven tools, beep, beep, proven tools to help move you in a direction or make shifts in your perspective or the way you think about things or the way you communicate about things. I mean, that's really kind of a no brainer. And I think that these are probably some positive steps we can take to bridging that gap between why men and women aren't connecting as they both hoped. And if that were to happen, I feel that less people would be without a partner. There'd be more connections and fewer people without a partner who wanted one. Don't forget, not everybody wants a partner. I know some people who do assume everybody does, but they don't. And uh, if that's something that's important to you and your alone time isn't fulfilling to you, but instead makes you lonely, these are definitely some things to think about and things to try. And to anybody who made it this far, who is either the parent or a grandparent to a boy in 2022, I encourage you to read a book or buy a book for the parent about that specific topic of raising boys who are in touch with their emotions and for sure, grandparents out there, don't ever tell that boy that big boys don't cry because they do. They cry all the time. And sometimes they're crying because they're lonely. Oh, wow. That kind of touched me there. I appreciate you stopping by today. I hope you found something helpful there and or interesting. If you did, please heed my mama's advice down there. She's encouraging you to give the episode a thumbs up. If you subscribe, then hit that ring bell and then you're notified every time I upload a new episode and I'd love to have you back. And until then, thanks for being here today and have a good one.